In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to St. James Merton for our recorded Mass for the Great Feast of Pentecost. Often called the birthday of the Church, our color today is bright red, showing the fire and power of God. Today we welcome our preacher and friend, Dr. Yazid Saeed of Hope Liverpool University, who was ordained on this Feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem. I had the privilege of being there. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, a reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, are all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
May I speak and may you hear to the glory of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's a pleasure to join you online from Liverpool, um, especially on this day, the Feast of Pentecost, <clears throat> which happens to be also the day that I remember my own ordination to the priesthood. Um, and something about this will come up later in the sermon. But in today's Gospel, reading from um, John's Gospel, we have an, a post-Easter, post-resurrection story. We find in it contained all the mysteries we celebrate when we say the creeds and when we celebrate the Eucharist. Jesus says to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then later he says, receive the Holy Spirit. So in this post-Easter and post-Ascension period, there is no other way of speaking about Jesus except as the one who lives alongside the source of all things. Jesus gives what the Father gives. He gives peace, forgiveness, and he gives transfiguration. Through death, he has passed into the heart of reality, which was proclaimed already at the beginning of John's Gospel, when we read of the Word of God living nearest to the Father's heart from all eternity. And from the Father's heart, we also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, which allows us a share in his closeness to the Father as we celebrate today. <clears throat> it's the gift that allows us to connect all the bits and pieces of the story of Jesus and allows us to speak and communicate that to others. But to acknowledge all of this is to accept that we can't go back to the Jesus who is humanly familiar. The resurrection shows that his life is like God's life. It's indestructible. He is not just some nice bloke who sadly died and whose grave we can visit. He is alive and he is ahead of us. Our faith does not look back to a great teacher and example as other faith traditions might emphasize. Our faith directs us forward to where Jesus leads, to being at home with God. And we say that despite the fact that the temptation is always to cling to the Jesus who is familiar before the resurrection. And that temptation is very deep. We prefer if Jesus were to stay where we can control him, where we can see him and tell him how we feel. Because we always want to make sure that we have the absolute reassurance that we are always in the right. A great many people in this time of pandemic that we are living through have days passing without a clear experience of joy or love. We feel living alongside often annoying circumstances, unable to connect with friends and family, though we might be happy not to connect with those who annoy us. The Feast of Pentecost today, this day when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit is on one level a feast to remember that God's promise is alive in us, is given to us, is a sign of God's faithful promise to us, regardless of what we go through. So that's one thing to remember. Christians are Christians, not because we have everything clear to us, not because we know exactly what we ought to do, when and how, or because we all have the right answers to all the questions. Christians are Christians because they sense that God's own life, broken, shared and buried, has proved to be uncontainable. It has spread out, it has kindled and it has renewed lives the world over. And that started from Jerusalem. And as I said at the beginning, on Pentecost Sunday in 2001, I was ordained a priest in Nazareth.
to work for the Anglican Church in Jerusalem. In fact, Father Jim himself attended my ordination. The ordination was first planned to take place in Jerusalem. However, after a suicide bombing taking place that weekend on the Saturday, many of those who were scheduled to arrive to Jerusalem decided to cancel, not knowing how the political tensions would develop. To make it easier, the bishop decided to hold the ordination in Nazareth. It was a weekend full of tension, uncertainty and fear. <clears throat> it was one particular occasion when those who visited from abroad, like Father Jim, to attend the ordination were conscious of the human complexity of so much they had seen and shared. This was a moment when choices seemed more dramatically clear. It felt that there was a sense in which you had to answer certain central questions about where you stood and with whom you belonged. And those are difficult issues to deal with, and sometimes we don't have the answers for them all the time. But that's what we hope for, and that's what we pray for as we join the Church at the celebration of Pentecost. And that's why it's not quite right to say that Pentecost is simply the birth time of the church or the birthday of the church. Because really the church did not start at Pentecost. The church started at Easter. The church started when a new community gathered around the risen Christ. So the church is really where Jesus is and nowhere else. But what Pentecost does is give us that moment when the true meaning of Christ's cross and the true meaning of Christ's resurrection becomes manifest. And also when all those around the disciples and the followers of Jesus <coughs> um, are able to communicate that message to others. When the new, the fishermen of Galilee are granted that fire of God to proclaim that which they have celebrated already to many other peoples and nations whom they thought they did not belong and were not part of the mission of the church. <coughs> so Pentecost is a celebration that we can speak to others. <coughs> we can communicate even to those who we thought we cannot speak to. The first apostles gathered, received the gift of the Spirit, which followed them to speak, which allowed them, sorry, to speak to, to people they never spoke to before, and they never thought they would speak to at all. So today's feast is really a reminder that we can do the same. We can speak to one another. We can speak to strangers, we can communicate in a way that we thought we would not. It's important to remember this, especially at a time when everyone is thinking about distance and distancing ourselves from each other. God makes it possible for us to communicate. Receiving the Spirit is of the Father is knowing that we can build bridges with others. We can connect, we can proclaim that which is good news to every conceivable human being, knowing that the whole world and our whole lives are God's gift to us, that which is loved and saved. It is to every conceivable human being everywhere, because of the Holy Spirit, um, doesn't live inside churches. Now, when we go to church, we don't knock at the door and say, is the Holy Spirit living here? Because the Holy Spirit fills the earth. It fills the earth from end to end. It's the reality of life. But your church, St. James, like all churches, remains the sign, the tangible sign, that the Holy Spirit is here in our hearts, in the lives of people all around. It's that which witnesses <clears throat> to the reality of the Spirit that is not just an abstract idea. 
the Holy Spirit seeks to work more deeply and more fully, more joyfully, in the lives of every one of us. So the Church declares God's Holy Spirit, seeks to be here, to be there, to be here and here and here, in life after life, in situation after situation, in one face after another. Last week we heard Jesus intercede for his disciples, saying, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And so perhaps when Jesus is asking on behalf of his disciples in this prayer, he is asking for them to try and see through the power of the Spirit, the journey ahead that he is opening up, managing to trust to take the step that he has led, whilst conscious that he will make mistakes that we will make mistakes. Therefore, we can face the cost of the current pandemic. We can pray. We can trust that God can make use of what we decide as we move forward, even when we make mistakes. He was raised to life, says St. Paul, for our justification, so that we may know he is with us, and that will never stop even when we fail. We are justified by faith as we follow the risen, ascended, glorified Lord into the unknown depths of God's life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we begin to live out such a life, if we can begin to live out such a life, we shall, as he commanded his disciples, be able to prompt others to come to take the first steps on Jesus' journey with us, and at this time, when we are unable to physically receive him in the sacrament, we can meet him among those around us who hunger for righteousness. And like them, we also hunger for the righteous one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Power of the Spirit and in union with Christ Jesus, our Lord, let us offer the prayer of the Church. Guide the Church, blessed with the Holy Spirit of God, to preach the gospel to all nations. Give to your people words of power, comfort, and life. Bless your ministers and all who preach the way of salvation. 
God who has spoken to the world to be heard and praised in many languages, now to a world troubled by divisions and fear and failure to understand, break down those barriers that hold people apart so that your wonderful works may be known to all. Have mercy on all whose lives are so limited by poverty, suffering, and ignorance that they do not know the fullness of life in you. Give grace and comfort to those who suffer because of COVID-19, for all those who are in poverty, those in any kind of need. We pray for those whose lives were led by the Spirit of God and who now rejoice where human tongues have ceased and to now have the power to rejoice where the Spirit of God leads. Christ, who breathes upon us the Spirit of life, receive all these our prayers in union with Mary, James, and all the saints. We ask this in the name of Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. for this Mass is for world peace and blessings upon the Anglican Diocese of Jerusalem and Hosam, its new Archbishop, to be consecrated next Sunday. We also remember our friends at Embrace the Middle East. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and pray. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice 
oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us. O oh, merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to our Savior's Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. The same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We now offer the Lord's Prayer in one's language of choice. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. My friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. my dream. 
we must change the streets no longer rang. Hushed were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As the shadow of a cross arose upon the lonely hill, as the shadow Let us pray. Faithful God, you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life. Open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for our world at this time of pandemic. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all creation. But the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some people are worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their family and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. We pray for the doctors and nurses and scientists and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. Thank you that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Jesus. Amen. Now for the last time until next Easter, we sing Regina Chan. Eucharist is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.